Welcome uh, to the Flagstaff morning. Gallery. Um, I'd like to ask you some questions about your work. Sure. Uh, can you please tell us a little bit about your background with regard to art and how you got involved in being a professional artist? Well, I, I loved painting as a child. My parents bought me one of those little uh, tin sets of watercolours that you could, uh, little blocks of colour that you could use and put on paper. But when I was quite young, I always painted in my spare time, apart from running around the place and playing rugby and stuff. I did enjoy it and I did art at school. The art master was very good and he got me into um, the art class for almost a third of my time at school. I was able to drop French and Latin and paint. So he was very encouraging. And um, it took me a while to get back to being a full-time professional painter, but I, I've always loved painting. Uh, why do you choose to work in, uh, in painting? Well, as I say, that's what I've loved doing. I've never really tried sculpture in any of the other forms of art, but um, I, well, I was a musician for a while. I went to university after school and joined rock and roll bands and really lived a, a hard out rock and roll lifestyle. Travelled around the world and um, did lots of sort of dead end jobs like oil rigs and iron ore mines in Australia and uh, stuff like that. But um, when I came back finally as a 40 year old to painting, uh, it was oil painting that did it for me, and that's, there was no question about that at all. What is it about oil paint that you're particularly attracted to? I love the stuff. I, I, I particularly love the colour. Right? And good oil paint, you know, as you can see, is very, very vibrant and deep, and it'll last generations and generations. I love the smell of it. You know, our, our house smells of oil paint when you walk in the front door because the studio is actually in the house. So I go to sleep to that smell and wake up to it as, as if you like it's our incense. And, uh, Yes, I really love working for it, working with it. It's tactile. I put it on my fingers and with bits of wood and with palette knives, and um, it's a joy to work with oils. What is the primary motivation behind your work? I find that's quite a difficult question, actually. I don't have to think in terms of motivation, except that I know I have to paint. I get up in the morning, and um, seven or eight in the morning, I'll be in the studio. I don't necessarily work all day, but I'm in and out of the studio all day. And if I have to go a couple of days without painting, I do feel slightly uneasy. I feel as if something's not quite right. So, in a sense, I'm a painting animal and I need to do it regularly. I need to do it on a daily basis. So, um, I, what is the motivation? I, just to do it, I think. Just to get up and start putting paint on. So, would you, say, would you say you were drawn to the process of painting? Uh, I, no, I think it's making the images actually. I like to make the images and I, I make them and then the painting tells me what it is. So the painting kind of forms over a period of time and so it gets a life of its own really and then it says this is what I am. And that's, so the last title, uh, the last name is the title, the last stroke of the brush is the title. In this case it's Hawley. I had these faces, sort of wildly ecstatic jumble of faces in there, these characters and uh, some of them are from my past as a rock and roll musician and all night parties and stuff. It took me a while to get the title, but I thought Hawley, which is that great Irish name for a party, you know, it's a sort of an all-nighter, so that's how that happened there. They have a life of their own, actually. What themes or issues do you wish the, the viewer to take away when they view your work? I don't know if I want them to take any themes or issues at all, but I, I would like them to leave being a fraction happier than when they walked into the gallery. <laughs> I'd feel really delighted if, they, if a person looked at my work and felt good about it, felt a little better about the world. I did mainly, I mean, there are some dark paintings. My paintings are kind of across that spectrum of dark to light. You know, there are some sad sort of paintings, some addiction and stuff, destructive stuff in some of the work. But mostly now they're very happy, and I think that's kind of a reflection of the way my life's changed over the 23 years I've been painting. So if people looked at them and got whatever they get out of it, actually, it's the paintings for the person to respond to them work out what they're about. But if they worked out feeling good, uh, they walked out of the gallery feeling good, that would be great. Are there any artists that have influenced you? There's quite a number. Of course, the genius Picasso was one of the first great painters I loved. Uh, the Cobra painters, like Carol Appel, the Dutchman. Uh, Van Gogh, Vincent Van Gogh. I saw an exhibition of his in uh, 1979 in Holland, and that was amazing. Um, New Zealand artists like Full Claremont, Tony Thomason, um, Geoffrey Harris is another that I greatly admire, a New Zealand painter. Um, there's quite a number actually when I think of it, but really I don't think a lot about that. I've seen their work and I liked it, but really I'm doing it for myself, and once I get going, all of that 
that stuff vanishes and it's just me in the canvas, so that's what it's about, really, essentially. Uh, what challenges uh, do you face creating art in New Zealand, or has New Zealand uh, influenced your art? Um, I, I guess being in New Zealand and being brought up here as a kid, I was sent to work in freezing works, so there are still motifs that reflect back to that time when I was a young man. And the number 173, which turns up in a lot of paintings, is my old freezing works number. Uh, there are things like volcanoes, and New Zealand's very volcanic land. There are lots of cabbage trees and the sort of vegetation that New Zealand has in, in paintings. Um, so every now and again a New Zealand motif will pop up, but I, but I think the paintings are really more of an international flavour. I, I kind of see myself as a, a primitive painter using very modern sort of psychedelic colours, you know what I mean? So there are some references to New Zealand, but I'm a painter of the world, really. What excites you most about going to New York? Well, I've been there many years ago. In 1981 I was there and I saw a Picasso retrospective, actually, and there were queues. This is a lot about New York, right? There were queues around the block. There must have been thousands of people. And I thought, this is a great city if it treasures art like that. So I would love to be a part of that in one shape or form. And what do you hope to bring to the New York exhibition? Uh, well, I'd like to bring my paintings, my colour, a bit of energy, I hope, and, um, and some joie, joie de vivre. And uh, yeah, it's very exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. And finally, what do you think of the Flagstaff Gallery bringing contemporary New Zealand art to New York? Well, I think it's a brilliant move. I think it's long overdue and uh, it's a great initiative. I don't think many New Yorkers, and of course it's a hugely cosmopolitan city, I don't know if many people there know much about New Zealand art. So I think it's working very well both ways, for the gallery and for the artists, but also for the people and the art lovers in New York who happen to be there because they're going to see and respond to what's happening in New Zealand and that's very exciting. Thank you Ewan, best of luck for you.